Okay, we'll start. We are live now. Okay. Okay, a very good afternoon to everyone who has joined this 10th Women in Science webinar on YouTube. Thank you for joining this event. So this is our 10th event in this Women in Science series, which is held in collaboration between Punjab University Chandigarh and Indian National Young Academy of Sciences in Yas, India. So we are very happy that today we have someone with us who is not only a great scientist, but as a woman also who has achieved a lot. So this is in continuation actually with our previous webinar, which was held last time, the ninth wise event. You must be remembering all of you who had joined last time that it was by Padmashri Professor Rohini Godbole and we had a very good and huge response. So uh, this time we have Dr. Victoria Sokolova. So I will just uh, introduce a few things about uh, WISE, Women in Science platform, which we have at Punjab University. So this is a platform which was started by a few women scientists. Then many of us came together and the purpose of this forum or this group is just one. We just want to promote what the women are achieving in the field of science because we have seen that in many cases in in fact in many countries we see that the achievements of women are not highlighted as much as that of their male counterparts so this is a small effort from our side to uh, to empower the women scientists and make them equally they are actually equally capable, but just that they don't get the due credit. So we just want to give them their due, due credit and to show the world what is the power of being a woman. And today uh, we have with us Dr. Victoria Sokolova. She is the head of microbiological and cell laboratories biosafety level one at the Institute of Inorganic Chemistry, University of Duisburg, Duisburg Essen with Professor D.M. Apple. She has actually traveled around the world for her research work. She's a university lecturer for biomaterials and biomineralization uh, with Professor Dr. Uh, M. Apple. Coordination. She's also coordinating the international exchange programs and scientific projects, DAD, PPP, with China, Greece, Japan, Taiwan, and USA. Her high quality research work is witnessed by her high impact publications. And interestingly, apart from this, she is the author of the book to rock your life, switch on your brain more often than your vacuum cleaner. Isn't it a very interesting title? Here she shares some secrets which helped her on her way and which can help you also in realizing your dreams. Today in her lecture, uh, Dr. Victoria will share with you her personal stories, ups and downs, and some methods which work like magic, even if you don't believe in fairy tales. So do you want to know how to stay motivated, how to be a great model, and how to use your time productively and keep on growing? So Dr. Victoria will share with you the stories from her own personal life and the lessons she's learned being a scientist, a public speaker, and a mother of three kids. Without taking much time, I would like to now welcome Professor Dr. Victoria and please begin with her lecture. Dr. Victoria. Thank you very much, Dr. Nishima. It is my honor and my pleasure to be here with you today and to share my experience. And I prepared something for you. Can you see this box behind me? Yeah. I have something there. Okay. What is it for you? Oh. I will show you. Okay. For me, it is a diary. Oh, but exactly. actually, <laughs> actually to say it is mostly for me like, like a piece of hope. Everything started for me with this diary. And today I would like to share with you, with all of you who is watching today and later some experiences from my personal and professional life. Yeah, I am a dreamer. Do you remember still your childhood dreams? Then I think about my childhood dreams. 
I had so many dreams. I wanted to play in Hollywood like every little girl. I wanted to conquer the world. I want to find therapeutics to, to treat many diseases all around the world. Hint, I had my eyes on the Nobel Prize. Yeah, I was a dreamer. I was flying in my dreams all my childhood. But still, I remember one shy girl who loved long speeches at school. When teachers talked, they didn't have time to ask her. But then she heard those three words, you answer now. Her heart started to beat like a speed train. Even now, when I look at the mirror, I ask myself, what happened to that shy girl in me? And you know, my life completely changed when I was 19 years old. I was studying in this beautiful Kharkov National University in Ukraine at biological department because I, I wanted to, to do something powerful in science. And for students, usually you have in Ukraine, like also all around the world, exchange programs. And I participated in Camp America. Yeah. Camp America, where you have possibility for summer to go to American camp, to work as a counselor, to work as a, as a teacher, and to spend there your whole summer. For the first time, with 19 years old, I left my home country. I uh, was flying to America. For me, it was a country of Hollywood, movie stars, McDonald's, who doesn't like McDonald's, especially children. I was like a big kid. So I left my country, new culture, new language, new people around me. But I've got such a, wel a welcome greeting uh, in Canelan camp, here being a counselor in American camp. Greetings. Hugs made me feel happy. Smiles ma made me feel welcome. But jokes in English, hmm. I keep on smiling, understanding no words. Why? Because in Ukraine, when you learn English language, you learn by reading and writing. Ten years old. And what you can actually say at the end, what's your name and where are you from? It was my case. I still remember my very first lesson at the Canalin camp. I was there like a counselor and trainer for board diving. We were sitting on the edge of the swimming pool. Ten kids were sitting around me and waiting for my instruction. Mm. In English. Okay, hello guys, my name is Victoria and I am from Ukraine. I started. Silence. Mm, okay. Do you like diving, board diving? Silence. I could hear like mosquito was flying by. Okay, understood. Time for action. I go on the diving board and do a double flip without a splash. I was that time a professional board diver. Kids were amazed. I could hardly close their jaws. Okay, guys, now follow me. I do jump, they do jump. I do jump, they do jump. If, I, if they do good, I give applause. If they do like a small frog, I jump like a big frog just to show all mistakes. Kids are having fun. I am happy. But can you imagine 100 jumps in one hour? I had around six lessons per day and every day. Of course, I was happy. But with the time, I was exhausted because my language was my action. Yes. Have you ever felt that you were drowning? 
I had that feeling that time. And my turning point in this story was one week later, we went for outdoor hiking. Outdoor in a camp when you go with your kids, which you are responsible for, uh, for hiking, you, you, you play in a woodland, uh, you bake potato on the fire, and you sleep in the sleeping bags. And that night, I had a night dream. In my dr night dream, I see camp director is coming to me and he said, Victoria, you've done such a great job. We are so proud of you. Now you're free to fly back home. Wow. I was so happy to hear these words. And in my dream, I was back at home with my parents, speaking Russian language, which was my mother language, and sitting in my comfortable surrounding. No responsibilities, no duties, no foreign language. Victoria, wake up. I open my eyes. And I see small, sweet little girl standing in front of me. I open my eyes just to understand that I was dreaming. I want to my dreams because this reality, a little bit shocking reality with responsibilities, duties, seems like too much for me. But after thinking, I've learned that taking a deep breath Count till 10, 10 and looking inside of yourself helped me to focus on here and now. And step by step, I could realize, look, is it everything so bad or is it just your imagination? Look, look at people around you. I look again on my sweet little girl and I see she has a surprise for me. She prepared something. I look around and I see kids from my cabin woke up early just to prepare breakfast for me. What could be better? And such step by step. And after I hear, Victoria, you know, you're our best counselor. Right words at the right place from people who care about you. What could be better? This is international language understandable for everyone. That summer, I spent in America. I have got unforgettable experience. I've learned that stay open-minded, be friendly, look for help and support. And there are usually people who can help you and critical moments and who, uh, who can lift you up. And this was the turning point where I also learned for myself, if I want to achieve goals, high goals, I should just follow three steps. Dream, dream big, have a plan, and of course, take action. Do just the first step. Step by step, you will reach your goals. So after finishing biology, calling, uh, biology in Ukraine, I had to decide. I had to make a choice between sport, because I loved sport. I was professional boat diver, or science. I decided to choose science where I am now. So my next step was to come to, for PhD to, to Germany, to University of Duisburg-Essen. And I'm happy for that because now here I have my family here. My husband is also a scientist. Uh, he is also cooperating all around the world. And I have uh, three kids, which I'm grateful for because they are my biggest Teachers, I learned from my children more than I could ever imagine. And uh, here in Germany, 
I, I've got my degree and I lead now biological laboratories. So we work with cell culture. Here you can see myself on the microscope doing some research. I like to do it still now to work with cells and cell culture and also with bacteria. And our expertise in our group is all about different kind of inorganic nanoparticles. And here you can see my expertise is calcium phosphate nanoparticles. And in this review article, which was published just one month ago, we are talking about application of calcium phosphate nanoparticles in biomedicine and biology. And you can apply such nanoparticles for transfection, gene silence, and immunization which is also important now, and some other biological very important topics. And also working uh, in laboratory, I like to share my knowledge. And uh, several years ago, I will send a link in a chat and maybe you can share it further. I, um, created YouTube channel where you can find video uh, where I show how to synthesize calcium phosphate nanoparticles because this is an interesting tool to bring biomolecules inside of cells and to, to use it as a carrier for biomolecules. Yeah, and uh, in science, I have learned that internalization and network and all around the world, this is that power which we can apply in science, which where we can uh, share our ideas, where we can spread our knowledge. And I am so grateful that we have such program as a German Academic Exchange Service, DAD, and you've heard we, we cooperate all around the world and uh, my husband uh, here you can see him in India we had nice project with Chennai and Chandigarh and I've never been to India but, but this is one of my dreams uh, uh, to, to experience such beautiful culture because from my husband I hear so many nice stories and about kind people and hospital and I am just amazed maybe one day my way will be also to India. I am looking forward for that. And also just getting some knowledge, it is great to share that, and especially with young generation. And uh, in the framework of DAD, we could organize some nice summer schools and some workshop for young researchers. For example, you can see here, uh, we could organize for students or PhD students from, from Ukraine, Georgia, Moldova, and Germany, so they could exchange their knowledge with they, they could see differences and similarities, challenges, and also they could learn how to present, how to run a right project, how to, to create new ideas, and so on. In the science, being a scientist, I also learned that three features, I would say, are critical and which helped me to develop myself in the science and which I would like also to share with you. And there, curiosity, creativity, and courage. When you ask question, when you're wondering, when you are looking, how can I help here or how can I uh, find for solution there, you stay curious. But as soon as you know what question are important for you, you start to be creative. Because if you want something, you will find for solution. If you do not want something, you will find for excuses, right? So being, being creative for me, it means activate your brain and look for solution and look for possibilities. But as soon as you found those possibilities, the next and the final play is courage. Because sometimes you just need to do one small step forward and you see people are friendly. You do second step forward and you see you're moving in the right direction. Two years ago, I had, a, had an idea 
in our group, if you were having the idea, how can we apply our ultra small gold nanoparticles? How can we test them like a candidate for future, maybe to treat brain diseases like cancer or like stroke? And for this, the idea was to switch on creativity. And we understood we need a model, 3D model, where we can test our particles. And this is so-called mini brains, nice 3D culture model. And there are so many advantages because usually you test nanoparticle in mice, but mice are not the same like human. But taking human cells, cultivating them in a, a tube, and creating such mini brains, you have more or less properties like you would have in, in the human brain. So this was the idea to, to, to learn how to do such 3D culture. And two years ago, I contacted an uh, expert in the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine, who are really expert in cultivating 3D cell culture models. And I had a short stay there for one week, I could stay there and to learn how to conduct a different kind of experiments, how to generate such many organoids. And I just had a really productive and great time there. And one day after lunch, we went for lunch to Chinese restaurant. And according to Chinese tradition, usually at the end of lunch, they bring you fortune cookies. I opened my fortune cookie and it was written, do not stop now. Do not stop now. I understood it general and concrete at the same time. I understood it like time for action and for growth. And I also understood that that what I was doing, I, I should be doing right and I should continue to do that. And finally enough, two months before I just started jotting on my first draft for my book. And do not stop. Now I understood like, you should be proud of yourself because you've made already the third step. Keep on moving, bring it to the end. You can do it. And for me, it was a sign. And what do I have else in my box? I started with be hope. And this be hope brought me to dream which came true for myself and I am so too happy. And uh, I would like just to share with you some stories which motivated me, which I've learned from my kids, which I've learned being a mom and being a scientist. And uh, this book would be also not possible without my speaking classes. Also, two years ago, I started to participate in speaking classes and uh, in more details, this is all about Toastmasters all around the world. I just want to share with you because this is like 30,000 clubs all around the world. And now with online possibilities, I could travel like during one hour all around the world and to visit clubs in America, in Australia, in Poland, and hopefully one day in India, because I know there are so many clubs. What I want to say, Participating in such speaking clubs, I learned how to present my ideas, how to share my ideas, how to spread knowledge and how to stay motivating, motivated uh, between people who understand you, who can lift you up. And uh, some of my topics in my book, for example, stress is good. Yes, stress is good. Sometimes uh, in everyday life, we have to accomplish 
we, especially as women, if I can talk so, we, we are multitasker. We should accomplish so much more than sometimes we could manage to accomplish. And um, I had a topic, so stress is good. Why? Because actually for our body, being excited, like being happy about something and being in stress, it's like more or less the same. For our brain, definitely the same. The only difference when you are excited, it's just a short period of time. But when you are in stress, it can take for longer. When you're in stress, first your, your body produces adrenaline, and when it takes longer, body can produce cortisol. And if it takes really for very long time, weeks and months, our body is not constructed to, to handle everything like this. So pathological processes can occur, and this is not what, uh, what our body was programmed for. I remember one day my daughter, Karina, she came to me and she asked, Mom, what do you usually do when you worry? Oh, my darling, I said, you know, worry is just normal. It's just protection reaction of our body to the surrounding around us. Because sometimes we have to survive. We have to activate our, all our power. And after I told my daughter one story about one little girl who went for a walk in the forest. She was looking around, having a good time, and her mother was sitting at home and waiting for her daughter. It was getting late, starting getting dark, and suddenly start to rain. The mother who was waiting for her daughter at home started to worry. And she decided to run to the forest to look for her daughter. And she was expecting that her daughter would be afraid or crying or something like that. She went to the forest. Lightning was uh, changing by thunder. And she was looking for the, her daughter. And what she found was so surprising for her. Every time, when lightning came, her daughter stopped to walk, was standing, looking at the sky and smiling. Mother was surprised. She came to her daughter, gave her a hug and asked, darling, wasn't you afraid walking by yourself in the forest when lightning comes? And the daughter said, mom, why should I be afraid? God is just taking pictures of me. I could see my daughter Karina was so impressed of this story. And she said, mom, you know, I want to be this little brave girl. And I also learn sometimes uh, everything what we ha uh, think negative could, be ha uh, could happen, happen actually to 10%. And if you change perspective, if you show on all situations from another perspective, you can see sometimes it is just accumulation of your stress or something like that. But if you, yeah. But if, for example, stress take a little bit longer, what, what can we do? And uh, I would say the magic word is T. If you close your eyes and imagine a nice tea ceremony, you're already on the right way. But actually, what I want to say, T stands for think, eat and act. Actually, this thinking 
eating and acting, you can produce happy hormones in your body. Usually we say we are what we eat, but we also we are what we think, changing just uh, style of thinking eating just a bit of dark chocolate. I do not know if you have it and if it's popular in India, yeah? but just close eyes and eat dark chocolate and you will feel already more power and uh, willingness to do something. And of course, act. when I am in stress, I go jogging or I go walk and I go just outside. And this helped me a lot. Also in science, I've learned how important to take responsibilities and to act as a leader. I think to be a leader is great, not just in science, but also in everyday life, because you know, every day we meet many people and we can be influenced by people but we can influence also people and the question is not uh, if you are a leader or not the question is how would you like to influence or to to show yourself around and um, Again, one day I remember I was picking up my son from school. And usually when I pick my children from school, we exchange different stories. They tell me uh, what they experienced during the day, something interesting. And I try to prepare to think about something interesting of what I can share with my children. And I remember one day my son said, he is six years old, and he said, Mom, tell me a story. Okay, I said. And here it uh, my son. And uh, driving back home, I told him one story about Africa. I told him, you know, every day in Africa, gazelle wakes up. And he knows it must run as fast as he can. Otherwise, he will be killed by a lion. Also, every morning in Africa, lions wake up. And lions, lion knows he must outrun the slowest gazelle. Otherwise, he will starve to death. And I finished, you know, it doesn't matter either you're a gazelle or a lion. Every time when sun comes up, you've better be running. I like that story, but mostly I like to, to get an impression from my children. And I ask Robert, and who do you want to be? A gazelle or a lion? And I was surprised to hear he said, Mom, you know, I would like to be a gazelle. How? Why? I was wondering. And he said, because she is kind. I liked that answer, but I, as a mother, I wanted him to understand that uh, gazelle is just surviving. She's just uh, running out, but lion, lion is a leader who want to achieve goals and who strive for, for his goals. I, I explained him my vision and what I was thinking about that. And after he looked at me and said, you know, mom, I decided to change my opinion. I want to be a lion. <sighs> and he was really so cute in his story. So I, I just wanted to share this with you. Yeah, being a scientist, being a scientist and working for 20 years in the laboratory, I also learned that we have so many similarities between this reaction tube and our body, yeah. In these reaction tubes, you have, for example, base, to, uh, base and uh, acid react to salt and water and enzymes uh, degrade into amino acids or something like that. The same you have in your body. Yeah. So, but I have a good news for you. I like this news because the reaction in your body you can control.
and re the reaction tube they usually go spontaneously. Imagine the situation. You have to go to work, you have a lot to do, and somehow you wake up too late. You stay in a traffic jam. You come to lane, you miss your meeting, you miss all deadlines, and what do you have? Your body start to produce adrenaline after cortisol, and you have so many chemical reactions, which uh, it would be better to switch off. Yeah. But as I told you, we are able to learn to control this reaction in our bodies just by breathing, just by thinking, just by doing like being in emotion, because maybe, you know, emotions create emotions. If you go for a walk, you change your type of thinking. If you go to dance, you can switch on the production of positive hormones. So the good idea that reaction in our body, we can change and we can switch on just mostly positive reaction in our body. Yeah. We hear usually a great story about a he, a he or she, for example, he was born in a poor family. He started to do experiments on a kitchen table, driving his parents crazy when he was just five years old or, yeah. And after he became or she became a famous scientist in his field, yeah. We like such stories. We like stories about heroes. Look in the movie. There are no movies without heroes, yeah? In everyday life, we like stories. We like heroes. But more interesting, just to look behind the stage. Look behind the stage and ask, who supported this hero on his way? Who showed her or him how to read or write? Who showed him the world of science? Who? Maybe it was just his teacher who inspired he, him on the way learning biology or chemistry or physics. Maybe it was his grandma who brought him every day to sleep and wrote him fairy tales or some interesting stories about science. Or maybe it was just his best friend or her best friend who showed or who shared his passion about science. What I want to say that there is no individual place Usually, there is a great team and a great spirit. If you would look around and look who surrounds you, who supported you on your way in your everyday life, maybe it was your spouse or your family. At work, maybe it was your colleagues or your boss or maybe just friends because Usually in our lives, I believe, come people at the right time, at the right place, who show you where you need support, where you need, and it could be people around you, it could be your mentor, it could be your coach, it could be anybody else who show you your limits, who show you how you can achieve the best of yourself and who can show you your strengths and improve them. And in my journey, on my journey to science and to success, maybe you can see here, this is a, a, a 
article, an article from one journal. And here you can see me being a student, uh, being a biology student in Ukraine that time. And you can see Professor Zeman who opened for me a window to Europe and Professor Epley here uh, who supported me also at the beginning because uh, I was a student who participated in the D program and for months I could go to Germany just to understand this culture, the science which is going in Germany. And I am so happy that even now I have such possibility to work as a woman in science and support other women. And in my talk, just to summarize my talk, I want to share with you 10, 10 essential things which I would recommend younger myself and would, which I would recommend to younger women. And let me share these 10 essential things with you. And the first one is take everything easy. Sometimes we think a lot, but take everything easy and ask for help if you need it because your emotional, physical, and psychological state is the main factor. If you're okay, everyone around you, especially being a mother, this is sometimes pretty challenging. But if you're okay, everyone is okay. Second one, I would uh, give advice to myself, cook simple, because just vegetables, fruits, drink a lot of uh, water and do it simple and fresh and you can just enjoy your meal. Third one, motion, motion, motion. I can uh, uh, stress it too much because for me, motions create emotion, just swimming, going for a walk or going to take a uh, dance course or whatever, bring your body into motion, which is very, very inspiring. Fourth, look just one day ahead. Also in the science, sometimes we are facing such big challenges. And uh, sometimes it is good to have a plan, but also just face one challenge today, one challenge tomorrow, just accomplish according to your plan, you can achieve really a lot. Fifth one, read books. You know, the title of title of my book, uh, To Rock Your Life, Switch On Your Brain More Often When You Vacuum Cleaner, came to my mind, this title, when I was vacuum cleaning my room. And I was thinking, we, especially women, how much time do we usually spend on household horror? Cleaning, washing, ironing, and so on, you can continue. For me, I calculated a little bit. It is like one hour per day, seven hours per week, 360 hours per year. It seems like a lot for me. And uh, combining cleaning with audiobooks or ironing with some educational programs can make this time a value because usually the audio book it's like 10 hours long and so so now you can calculate if you have 360 hours per year you can listen around 36 books 36 books per year do you know someone who is reading or listening to so many books I try to apply this, so I'm doing this for the last two years. Sometimes I think maybe I'm cleaning too much, but I started to enjoy it. And uh, this is my fifth advice. Listen to books and use your time if you can. Sixth one, be a champion. Being a champion means not just in sport. Sometimes you can be a champion at work, in your family around your friends, because being a champion is being a leader, taking responsibilities and just to show you from your best side. Seventh, live not by chance, but by choice. 
you cannot change people around you and you don't have to, but you have a choice. You have a choice to smile, to be friendly, to be open-minded, to look around, to share your help or your knowledge. So use your live by choice. Eighth one, change is a new opportunity. I was afraid of changes. I was telling you at the beginning, new country, new language, everything new changes every time. I was sometimes in stress, right? But I also learned that the only constant thing in our life is ever changing process. So keep on growing, keep on changes and use this change as a new opportunity. Ninth, I also learned being a mother and being a scientist that work-life balance is a myth. Yeah, because being a woman, being a mother, having a family, sometimes you have invest a lot of time in your work. You go for conferences, you do research, you stay late at night because you cannot finish at time your experiments and so on. But sometimes you have to invest more time in your family. Your kids, for example, having concert or having some events at school and you have to cook muffins and to bring something to school and to, to arrange something. So this is not a balance, but there is a good choice. When you're at work, be completely at work. Don't worry about what is going on to be or what to plan for the next concert. Be completely in work. And when you're at home, switch on, switch off all telephones and emails and just enjoy your time being at home. And this is really helpful because then you are actively at your work and when you are actively at home, and this is helpful, this gives you then motivation and power to do in both places and to be your own champion. And the last one. Tenth one, smile. I am a dreamer and I believe that imagination in more, is more powerful than knowledge. And I believe that storytelling is sometimes more powerful than facts. So smile. Let your smile change the world. But do not let the world change your smile. By smiling, by dreaming big dreams, only in such way you can be a hero of your own story. Thank you very much. And I'm welcome for questions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Victoria. It was so nice hearing you. And you gave us so many tips on actually how to erase this thing of work-life balance from our minds. And very rightly, you said that when we are at work, we should be completely at work and not worry about other things. And when we are at home, we should enjoy completely uh, our kids, our family, and not worry about work. So thank you for those tips. And now I would like to ask you some questions, So, which... Uh, our audience are sending us. So the first question is from a, a scholar. He is saying that uh, his name is Prabhjot. He's saying thank you for the inspiring talk and how to focus and work for the big scientific dream we aspire for when socioeconomic ch challenges burden the mind. So he's saying that when our mind is already burdened by the socioeconomical challenges, how do we dream big about the big scientific things? How do we do that? How do we aspire for it? Very interesting question. And uh, sure, for many questions, maybe it is sometimes too hard to find answers, uh, but I would say so. If you already asking yourself such questions, I've learned it. If you ask yourself such question, somewhere inside you have already some answers 
because usually if you do not ask question if we do not have answer already inside of us. So great question. And I would just suggest look for answers. Uh, try to do just so small steps. For me, also cooperation and uh, looking for in different cultures, how it could be possible, ask another people or maybe look for people who achieve something big already in this field. It is also could be helpful because if you do not know something, but we have a role model, maybe just not afraid to, to write an email to contact or to do something just to, because every time when we are asking question, every time, again and again, step by step, uh, the answer will appear. And I hope this answer could be also possible to answer just by looking for, for further solutions. Thank you, Dr. Victoria. Thank you. Uh, Professor Jagdeep Kaur is uh, appreciating your lecture. She's saying great lecture. She's also a part of this Women in Science core group. And uh, another assistant professor from uh, Punjab University, she's Dr. Richa. She's saying it's a very inspiring talk. And she has a question for you. She's asking how to convince your family about your dreams you don't want to give up. So she's asking of methods to convince the family to pursue our own dreams. That's what I could understand from her question. Very great question. And... Uh... To answer on this question is uh, to make your own success to be a success of your whole family. Because uh, here we are talking about uh, women and science, and we are talking about heroes, separate heroes. But as I told you, more you involve people, imagine you are not a tennis play player, you are football player or maybe you're a basketball player there you are not alone yeah you can be a star in your field and you can purchase your dream but maybe you can be then leader in your team and you show the direction but try to involve as many people as you can and people who feel they're involved and they can participate and they can enjoy your success like their own success this is what brings energy to the family. So also for your children, for your spouse or your husband, show him, show your children that even growing and purchasing your dream, you're there for them, you can bring them and you can lift everyone up just by making your own dream dream of everyone. This is a matter how you can project it. Is it just for you or is it like value and advantage for your whole family? And if you can do it, I think nobody will reject happiness or gifts or present or something or just sweet time being in your company. This is challenging, right? Sometimes uh, you need more energy just to spread that energy, but this is very helpful. And this is what such forums are for, like women in science, where other women can also try and help convince other people that, uh, yes, you should not stop women in science to go forward. Thank you, Dr. Victoria. Thank you. And uh, one student is, uh, she's a graduating student. She's saying that it's a very nice and motivational talk for me. Her name is Himanshi. So she's appreciating your talk so because young students are also they are also watching this uh, uh, this webinar and they're also learning these young girls are also learning so even i have a question for you if you could please answer so uh, we uh, we always see that there are a lot many girls who enter schools they complete their schooling even they uh, complete their graduation but when you go up when you go up the ladder, you see that the numbers are always decreasing. And this is what we have found in the reports also, where there is there's a statistical analysis uh, which has been done. And in India, uh, we also have that report wherein it has said it, they have termed it as a leaky pipeline. 
so they call it a leaky pipeline because it and of course there is we can see that we don't see many women in the higher governing bodies or as um, vice chancellors or in the as the head of institutions but we do see that girls do enter they complete their schooling but why is it so so what is your viewpoint on that yeah, very great question. And we are facing this uh, also in Germany. And we can see because you have 50-50 uh, men and women uh, being students, PhD students, but moving further, less and less uh, women you can find on leading position. This is really true. And uh, of course, uh, women are responsible for children and who can stay at home or who can give birth uh, and this, uh, of course, uh, this is also time which should be invested from women's side for the family, for, uh, for having family, children, and so on. The solution uh, which uh, I can share my personal stories, and I am thankful to, to my boss, Professor Apple, because I have three children, and uh, I was lucky that I could bring sometimes my kids uh, to workplace uh, at the beginning, but also in our university, it is great that we have like a kindergarten, like uh, small groups, uh, and where you can already bring uh, children uh, when they are, for example, some three or six month old and you can run uh, to your child uh, any any time because it is like like to the next door and this is like relaxing for the mother who knows child is okay and so I can work of course you you should invest for example several months uh, after the birth and so on but uh, it is great to have such opportunities uh, just uh, at the university uh, they started to do it just 10 years ago for example but they organize such groups where you can just leave your child uh, for a certain period of time, maybe not for the whole day. But I think for women, for women in science, it is important to stay, like to be updated. Because if you go and stay at home for 10 years and come back in science, everything is already completely new. But if you stay at home just for three months uh, and uh, in between you read something, you stay in contact and after you can dive again, maybe not for the whole day, but for a few hours in the science, what I actually did. So even having three kids, I, I stayed at home just uh, like several months for each kid and uh, uh, because of that I didn't lose that uh, that uh, space I would say that acceleration in science where you have to keep and you stay updated and you too should understand what is going on in which field so this would be also but also a lot depend on family and a lot depend on different cultures for example in Ukraine my my parents would be helped a lot but here in Germany many I see uh, people try to be independent so not parents because parents usually are still working but you look for a babysitter or someone who can help you so it's also depend on specific individual situation yeah thank you thank you for for that answer and uh, maybe one last question is that how can women be free of this guilt guilt first guilt is like if you spend like you said more time with your family so uh, okay we, I'm not spending more time at work and if you spend more time at work maybe people would say women should not be that aspirational because they have to look after their family also so so what what is your take on that how to remove your that guilt out of your mind and work freely or take care of your family great question I think uh... We, if you spend really active time, it could be just 15 minutes of active time can replace one hour of doing nothing. For example, imagine you stay as a, uh, as a woman uh, at home and you just take care of your children. But sometimes you are tired, uh, you don't want to do something, and kids just playing and you do your own stuff. 
is it good or not good? But I think if we try to balance uh, or try to be successful in science and at home, use your time actively. So if you're at home, maybe I can invest just several hours, uh, hours uh, to play with my children, but I rarely play. I go for a walk, I play tennis, uh, we organize concert, we do whatever we can do, like one big team. And this hour unite us so well that I don't feel myself guilty because I know that my children are still attached to me because they know that I am at home, I play, I I read, I do something. Of course, uh, I have to find time for other stuff, but this is completely something different. So just to give this guilt away, invest your time to stay active and to be like there where you are now. And this is for me that solution which I apply in my everyday life. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Victor. In fact, you answered it in your talk itself that wherever you are, you should be in complete form wherever you are. So just give your 100% to that particular moment, right? Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Victoria. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation to be a part of this webinar series. And you also told us about your uh, latest book also. We'll be happy if we can get it on Amazon soon in India also to rock your life, switch on your brain more often than your vacuum cleaner. I must say it is a very interesting topic. <laughs> so now I would like to uh, formally present the vote of thanks. So uh, I'm thankful uh, to the Vice Chancellor of Punjab University for letting us run this Women in Science program freely at the university. And I'm also th very thankful to INYAS, Indian National Young Academy of Sciences, to the chair chairperson of this INYAS, uh, Dr. Chandra. She, he could not join because of some pro health problem. Uh, so in ya, we are uh, using the INYAS Zoom account and uh, we are so thankful to INYAS for this. And we are also thankful to the WISE Women in Science members, this team which was started, this forum which was started by Professor Deepti Gupta from Punjab University and uh, Professor Achna Bhatnagar, Professor Jayanti Datta ma'am and Professor Jaddeep Kaur ma'am all from Punjab University. We are so thankful to all of you. And we are also thankful to uh, Meghna. Meghna, who has, uh, she's a student from my institute at uh, Punjab University who has helped us with the posters, designing, etc. She, We are very thankful to her as well. And we are also thankful to all of the people who have joined us on YouTube, who are listening to us on YouTube. And we are so thankful to you for sending us your questions, your queries. And most importantly, we are very thankful to our esteemed speaker for today, Dr. Victoria. Thank you so much. You have taken out time from your busy schedule and given us this opportunity to us to uh, having heard you and uh, uh, learned about your new book also. And thank you so much. And we will look forward to meeting you in person soon th as soon as this pandemic is over. We formally invite you to India, to Punjab University Chandigarh also. Please do come, do visit us. We'd be very very happy to host you and thank you so much thank you very much thank you very much thank you for your nice word and invitation definitely i will come one day thank you very much thank you thank you thank you dr victoria <laughs>